Mm, wow, we hey folks, I'm a desert artist here. You know, I've done a lot of trying to understand the power of prayer and, well, why it fails sometimes. Why, you know, even though we pray for the best and ask God for, for help and assistance, it, He doesn't give it to us. I know it's, He gives us trials and tribulations to build our strength. But, you know, I mean, through all the millions and pe millions and millions and millions and millions of people that have died because, well, they're, they just were innocent victims. And <clears throat> I, I, somehow I don't understand how God would allow uh, these inno innocent victims to uh, lie in a sleep until the until the, the return has come. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to chew on this stuff and make it make sense in my brain. And I think the power of faith, I was, well, there's a lot of things, <laughs> if you don't have the faith, you can't believe, and therefore prayer will not work. So, uh, having the faith is not enough. Uh, supposedly you have to practice more than that. You have to try to abstain from the, from the, the, the D word, you know, I guess well, I can say it because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to explain it. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. So, let's see, where was I at? I'm sorry, I'm so forgetful. Um, power of prayer and it failing you know and this is why I believe in reincarnation um, because if there are innocent victims out there that are prayed for would God continue to let them lie in the ground and have their spirit only be alive for a short amount of time or would or are they should they have lived their purpose even though everything happens for a reason Sometimes these things don't happen for a reason. And I believe a lot of people out there will agree with me on that. And I, and I, I, like I said, for some reason, something tells me reincarnation exists. Uh, my, my, my inner voice, I know, to choose between the, the good and the bad. And, you know, but I'm, I also have the scientific mind, which I guess might be part of human nature, which is the, uh, the force that lures you away from the Word of God. Which, now, going back to that, I must explain that in order to be a true Christian, you must believe that, uh, I guess, Jesus existed, which he did. Because here's the reason why Jesus existed. If Jesus didn't exist, the Bible wouldn't, have, wouldn't exist. Therefore, it could not have been transformed into the several different languages and have caused many, 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 many wars. So, the proof that the Bible does exist tells a story, which is the, oh, uh, well, now why is the Bible told in stories and not just like a, a fact of law? Well, I, because back then, paper wasn't really <laughs> a valid source of printing stuff out. I mean, people were poor. <laughs> they begged for little bronze pennies. Come on. So, <clears throat> the best way to tell a story is through, and uh, the best way to tell a moral of a story is to tell a story. And, uh, hey, dog. And so, when the story is told, the moral is told at the end. Therefore, justifying the reason for uh, the re uh, reason why the Bible is the Word of God and cannot be really changed because everything kind of like flows together and proves itself, although in some cases it does contradict itself. But that's for personal interpretation, which is why God gave us the Medulla Oblongata, okay, which is pretty much gives us the God factor, common thought and reason and stuff like that. And, uh, so the power of prayer not working, you know, uh, I understand people having faith and as much as they do, it doesn't help. Now I understand that it's supposed to be multiplied by the amount of people that pray together, and but still it doesn't help. I know it's all part of God's plan, but I mean, if people are supposed to have faith, won't they lose faith if they don't 
have some sort of a thing to learn. And I think that's a lot of the problem with people giving up on religion is they don't understand that, well, why didn't God answer my prayer? I'm not a Christian anymore. Well, because <laughs> we're just so small and into porn into the, into the vast, <laughs> the vastness that is space because God did create everything. That's everything. Yeah. The electricity. The electricity that runs in our head is our connection to the God, which is everything's created by electricity. If electricity wasn't here, well, we wouldn't be here. That's simple as that. That's God. It's, that's our connection is the electrical spirit, the little TV tuner. You close your eyes and you look into your mind and you have the Bible in your heart, the, the goodness of the Bible in your heart, the true positive way to be at one with God because Jesus was the only one that has risen to God. And well, <laughs> in, I, in order to uh, rise to God, um, you must have the true faith of the word and try to live by it as best as you can. But there's a mistake that some of those people out there that they try to live by the word and all that, but you know what? They scare people away. They scare them. I was in the VA the other day and I was just getting coffee at the Starbucks place. And this guy was talking to the coffee girl about uh, something about power of prayer and why her prayer wasn't answered. and. You know, I mean, then he started started spouting off all these Bible verses and and stuff, and it's like you must seek the Word, and 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 then he starts spouting off about little voices in their head, and everybody has their little voices, and, and you know that's basically what I'm trying to what I'm trying to explain, so I could understand where he was coming from. But the way <laughs> the way in which he tried to tell this girl was absolutely extremist. Uh, I mean, you don't, <laughs> you want to lure somebody into the following the word and understand the reason behind everything, you, you have to, <laughs> you can't go into it as, as an extremist and force all these points of view. You have to understand, you have to start, the, the, you, you got you to gotta crawl before you can walk and walk before you can run and run before you can sprint and sprint before you can even run a marathon you know or play a game of football or soccer i mean you know what i mean holy smokes you just start out with a basis and then once people find the power of the voice within and the guidebook that is the bible that can help you use the power of prayer to decipher why something has happened and how you can make a change because it is the who, what, where, when, why, the five things that most people look for, but a lot of the pe things people don't look for is how. How can they make a difference by having the power of the word of God within their soul? And what can the incident that happened that was a failure to the power of prayer how how what can be learned from that and how can we still walk this the, the the righteous path god gives us challenges to build our strength he gives he tells us gives us patience and tells us to wait we ask for patience he tells us to wait well you'll get it so you know <laughs> God doesn't give you things that you ask for. Simple as that. You have to look to the second step of the troubleshooting diagram to understand step one, then step two. Well, when I was in e when I was in electrician school uh, and in the Coast Guard, they, they told me voltage or, or voltage ran one way and current ran the other. Now, I couldn't. I was like, well, how can that happen? They, if there are two forms of 
of energy, how can they both go the opposite way? And you know what the teacher told me? He said, <laughs> he said, don't ask why, it's law. It just is. If Jesus was the connection to God, his God, the, the Christian, the all-knowing, the one, he was given the power to make us view a perception of the way we should live. Jesus was the uh, was the way in which we were supposed to learn how to walk in order to achieve the right way to walk on our path to perfection. But because we are not perfection, we are sinners and failures, then we must learn to uh, follow the word and live the righteous path. Uh, so, you know, the, when prayer fails, that doesn't mean that you're supposed to turn away from God. It's supposed to, you turn to God because your prayer did not work. There's a reason why it did not work and you have to turn within. I think that's what this guy in the coffee shop was trying to tell you. You have to turn to the word. But when you turn to the word, you're only turning to one thing. You're not turning to three things, the Holy Trinity. Okay, so following the resemblance of the path Jesus walked, the goodness, is why the Bible exists. If Jesus didn't exist, the Bible wouldn't exist, and we would all be Neanderthals. Well, we are kind of all part Neanderthal, according to science. Um, so, <sighs> I believe that these innocent victims that die uh, are reincarnated because they do have a life to live. So, someone told me, he was like, well, is, is God expected to send everybody upstairs and watch everybody live in pain and agony and defeat? No. No, he's not there to do that. He's that's why I guess that's why that's why I'm having a problem with the sleeping thing that they're all these people are being created these billions of people are being created and they're all going to sleep until the second coming that's a lot of freaking people holy smokes and up to the you know man that's that's where I'm having the problem is you know I see it as you know there's only a certain amount of souls in the world and I believe that there are, because we don't understand the language of some of these animals, doesn't mean that they don't have a soul or a spirit. They are still provided by animal nature, not human nature, but the nature of nature, if that makes sense. So I believe they have thought processes and reasoning, but I don't think they have the medulla oblongata that is the quote unquote God factor that puts the electricity into, into us somehow that makes us realize that we are just machines. We are just vessels because our soul and our spirit is inside. Our soul and our spirit is controlled by electricity. Well, as far as our life too, we have that in us, well, we wouldn't be vessels. So that goes back to the, uh, brings us all back to the, the circle of life, the, the sine wave of electricity, the positive and the negative. Well, that's a, basically a circle you know, you keep going positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative, positive. Okay, well, you know, I'm trying to correlate these things all together. Because I'm really trying to make sense of this stuff. 
and I hope I can at some point. I'd really like to. I'm getting closer. Uh, thank you all for continuing to watch and like continue to come up with new questions and ideas and stuff. I'm I'm walking a path, and there's a reason why I am. Like I said, I've been dead twice before. I've been dead twice, yeah, at age 12. I slammed into a tree, yep, unconscious for three days. Pronounced dead twice. <laughs> I've evaded death several times since then. You know, and there's a reason why I am here. I believe the power of faith is, uh, the faith you need to seek is within. If it is to be, it is up to me. A phrase to live by, because it is only you who can create enough power and influence to make people see what they need to see. Or do what they need to do. Uh, when something needs to be done that you think <clears throat> is of vital importance to the world or your community or your family or even just your significant other or your kids, and something needs to be done, you need to get on it. If it is to be, it is up to me. Ten words to live by. You guys have a great day. Be safe.